back to Bookshelf Tour. Uh, here is the special bit of my Bookshelf Tour. I was given this as a gift, as a set, um, by Zsa Zsa way back in the day, I think 2010, maybe even earlier. And it took me forever to actually get to it and start it. And then it took me two years, maybe a little bit more, to actually get through it. And what I'm talking about here is Proust, In Search of Lost Time. You know, let me just hold up the first one to begin with, uh, which is Swan's Way. Uh, the uh, This is the Montcrief and... Oh, what is it? Here. It doesn't actually say I should get the translator, because I did not read this in the original French. This is translated by C.K. Scott Moncrief and Terence Kilmartin, revised by D.J. Enright. Uh, Marcel Proust wrote these books uh, leading up to uh, leading up to World War One. God, see now you see I get my my wars. I'm pretty sure it's World War One because it was. All right. Where, yeah, it was Swan's Way first appeared in in the Modern Library in 1928. Um, and we've got the books. Yes. So first, the first volume was uh, was 19. The, the first volume, Swan's Way, was published in 1913. In 1919, the second volume, Within a Budding Grove, won the Goncourt prize for bringing Proust to great and instantaneous fame. Two subsequent sections, The Grimanti's Way, 1920-21, and Sodom and Gomorrah, 1921, um, appeared in his lifetime, and uh, the remaining volumes were published following his death in November 18, 1922, The Captive in 1923, and The Fugitive in 1925, and Time re Regained in 1927. So yes, he died in in 1922 and the final volume was published in 1927 so uh it's it's his it's his major major work with uh a uh, marcel as the uh, narrator at the beginning and um the reason it took me so long to read these was they're very dense and they're very heady and i found i had to kind of i read i read a whole library of other books uh, in between reading uh, volumes or uh, sections of, uh, of of the things. Um, you know, starting off with Swan's Way, which is a lot of this is Marcel's childhood. Um, you know, all framed around the idea of him, you know, just having, it's like the dipped in, a, uh, dipped, a Madeleine dipped in tea, bring, sending him back, bringing back all the memories and the, 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 the microscopic, kaleidoscopic, view of uh of 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 history of his of his own life history and of his times history um yeah starting out with with swan's way which is each book has its own kind of tone to it uh its own kind of feel to it um it's one complete life but it's like it's like you know your life is lit in many different ways and how your childhood was if you're lucky like marcel it's 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 hyacinth gardens lush beautiful intense intense feelings intense everything uh, a certain kind of uh childhood selfishness um and yeah yeah um and you know and then we and we go through we go through the books and i mean swan's way itself is a lot is a lot less about marcel as it is about swan uh and his his uh obsessive love affairs with uh a woman and his jealousies, which kind of prefigures Marcel's indeed way of going through life. And in some ways you could say, ah, was it, is it the example of Swan that Marcel has but between towards him? And I mean, these are all framed as uh, heterosexual uh, relationships, even though, uh, you know, within a budding grove, we get to, uh, you know, the Grimante's way, which is definitely more Marcel being obsessed. But Marcel, the narrator, we should always, because everything, like right? Marcel's relationships in these books are all heterosexual, though uh, Marcel Proust uh, was a gay man. Um, if it was be organized, he he had relationships with men exclusively. Um, he did depict stuff like in Sodom and Gomorrah, which was um, you know actual um, kind of 
um, gay relationships with a lot of the um, the internalized, I guess, homophobia of the times of you know people call, being called inverts, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. Yet at the same time, you could also say that like a lot of his relationships with women, Albertine and stuff like that, were fairly thinly veiled. You could say you could you could view them as as veiled uh, gay relationships, but with but cast with women as 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 um, the love objects. Though you could also just see it as I mean I think Proust is such a great writer. You also just see it as relationships between a male uh, to, between two partners and the jealousies and the uh, the longings like how how you could be longing for someone so much is actually better than the actual relationship itself and the, the self-sabotage that happens um, with, within all the stuff. Uh, there's the captive and the fugitive, the, the captive, the fugitive, which is really Marcel in this book, the, the character is, um, is sort of a monster. He is someone who is so obsessive in his love, so jealous, so controlling, uh, you kind of you you recoil from him. He is he's a bit he's he's kind of like he's the worst worst of the kind of that possessive possessive love. Um, you know the 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 whole charmingness of of, of 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 holding and longing becomes curdled there. It's like you, Mark Proust, definitely make sure you see the dark side of all that. And I mean, I think it's one of these also one of these books. I was kind of shocked because it so much seems like it's set. Uh, in the times before World War, the World War, um, that that you, it's a shock when suddenly modern life, as we sort of know it, I, it's interesting how World War One poking up in here, suddenly it's like, oh shit, we're in the modern world. This isn't Paris of 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 gorgeous parties and everyone well dressed. This is like Paris of, you know, of of soldiers of bombed out. Not bombed out stuff of, of hard hard living um so it's definitely one of these it's it's a part of the thing that gives the novel the power is that it's depicting a time that isn't anymore and it's depicting the new time uh the changing the change the change uh so yes this was uh, yeah <laughs> definitely a uh a, 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 a um a bargain seeker there um with the final volume I think they're all, the bottom all, as just sort of a, a very good buy for me. I think very good buy for me. I don't know if they were all, if it was thirty-three fifty for the entire set. I think it might have been thirty-three fifty for the entire set. I'd have to ask her about that. Well, let's just say, even if it was thirty-three fifty for each volume, it would have been worth it because uh, that was uh, two years of some of the best, the best reading of my life. Uh, of a of the best um the great accomplishment of my of my life if you could have an accomplishment a great joy of just getting to sink into this world uh and i mean i haven't even gone into proust's language even in translation um it's gorgeous and overwhelming and so many different tones and registers and uh uh yeah yeah i have nothing but uh good things to say other than some some of it is so i find so dense that i could only read a little bit of it at a time i took a little bit each day and that's so some of those two years wasn't just uh because i was putting other books in between but, but because it took me so long to get through those sentences and so it's a it is a a commitment but ah oh, man i love that commitment that was that was gorgeous and it is one of those things of like yeah i will i will I will reread. This is this is. There's a reason why I still have these. It's because I'm. I will reread them at some point. <laughs> the the constant refrain of all, of all of all um, readers of of all readers is I will reread. I will reread. So yes, that's what I have today. Proust.